Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. So, we have some system requirements for Starfield on the PC and what makes this a bit more interesting to dissect is the uh, recent brouhaha regarding Bethesda targeting 30 FPS on console to favour consistency. Now the first thing of note is that both for the recommended and the minimum requirements an SSD is required. Now this may impact those of you that maybe keep your bigger games on a hard drive. It's not uncommon for people to run like a small SSD as a boot drive to keep your OS on and then maybe have a big spinning disk, one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte hard disk drive to keep your bigger games on. Similarly, for both the minimum and the recommended settings, 16 gigabytes of RAM is required. Those of you getting by on eight gigabytes of RAM may have a problem here. The good news is that RAM pricing right now is uh, pretty decent at the time of filming. Quickly uh, having a quick look on PC part picker over here, you see that Corsair will do a 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 for 35.99, which is a great price when you consider what that used to cost not that long ago. Um, obviously, if you're on DDR5, I don't know what you'd be doing running 8 gig anyway, so I think this is very much a DDR4 conversation. Okay, let's get into the GPU requirements. So for the minimum specs uh, from AMD, Team Red, we're looking at the AMD RX 5700 non-XT. And for NVIDIA, we have the 1070 Ti. Now, both of these cards are kind of like pre-ray tracing era cards, so clearly that's off the table at minimum spec requirements, and, and rightly so. Now looking over at Tech Power Up, you can see if we scroll down here, it compares. So we've got the uh, 1070 Ti here as the baseline. And if we compare and contrast to the RX 5700, that is 9% faster, it says, um, than the 1070 Ti. Obviously in between here, we've got the 5600 XT, the Vega 64, RTX 2060 and of course the GTX 1080 non-TI. So this sort of area is what's considered the minimum. Now, what I thought was quite interesting is if we just go back a little bit, even if we drop 10%-ish of performance, go back to the 1660 Ti and 1660 Super, I'd be really interested to see when the game comes out, how well could it run on a 1660 Super slash Ti? Because you know, if we look at the uh, Steam hardware survey, as of May 2023, obviously the 1650 vanilla is, is top at the moment. But you don't have to scroll down that far to find the likes of the 1660 Super and TI. So clearly this is a card that a lot of gamers are using at the moment. So I do wonder, could we maybe creep back that far? I mean, it is only if we compare back to the 1070 Ti, it is only sort of 11, 13% slower. Is that going to be the biggest deal? I don't know. Maybe. Um, because let's keep in mind, of course, if we look at the 1660 Ti, we do drop down to 6 gig of video memory. So maybe that could be uh, where it falls down. Now looking over at the recommended settings, um, and I, I sort of had to look twice because we've got the RX 6800 XT alongside the GeForce RTX 2080. Non-Super, non-TI, just vanilla 2080. Now in my mind, the 6800 XT is a whole tier above the 2080 in terms of performance. I mean, the 6800 XT launched alongside Nvidia's 30 series to directly compete with the 30 series. So it seems odd that they are putting it next to a 2080. I was maybe expecting something more like a 6700 XT to be suggested instead. The only thing I can think of is that the 6800 XT is the only card in AMD's lineup that can pull off the desired level of ray tracing that they're trying to achieve. Again, it'll be interesting to see how cards like the 6700 XT fare when the game is actually out. Another key takeaway here actually is that the 2080 is an 8GB GPU. Now for those of you that have been paying attention to tech YouTube recently, uh, you'll probably know that GPU VRAM um, is all the rage at the moment. Apparently 8GB is simply no longer enough. Um, the good news here at least is that Starfield should be playable at recommended settings with an 8GB VRAM card. All right, let's talk CPUs for a minute here. And for the minimum requirements, they recommend an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X or an Intel Core i7-6800K. The AMD version, if we have a look at Tech Power Up over here, the AMD 2600X that came out in 2018 and then the uh, 6800K was a couple of years behind that, I believe in 2016. Important to note that both of these, uh, if we compare between the two, are six core 
12 thread CPUs. So if you are running a four core eight thread, it's possible you might have issues. I mean, it may run, probably will run, but will it run smoothly, consistently? Uh, maybe not, so keep that in mind. Looking on over at the recommended side, uh, we've got the Ryzen 5 3600X and the Intel uh, Core i5 10600K. Now, um, in terms of AMD, this is just basically the next generation product versus what came in the minimum specs, so 2600X, 3600X, that makes sense. Intel's recommending a much newer chip, 10600K versus the 6800K, I mean that's a good four uh, Intel generations newer. Again though, these are 6 core, 12 thread parts, um, albeit newer 6 core, 12 thread parts, so while they don't have any more cores, they have better cores, therefore you can get more performance. Now. This is all well and good, but th there's an elephant in the room here, and that is that Bethesda are saying that they're going to target 30 FPS on console. So, does that mean that one or both of these sets of system requirements will be targeting 30 FPS on PC? And if so, what resolutions and what frame rate targets do they have in mind for each of these system requirements? So, maybe we're looking at 1080p 30 for the minimum settings and 4K 30 for the recommended. I, I don't know. Maybe you need to go to the real top end of PC hardware to kind of get 60 plus. The bottom line is, it's really unclear at this stage. My gut feeling, and it is only a gut feeling, but it is that I suspect there is uh, possibly a good bit of CPU limiting taking place over on the consoles. Now to briefly explain what it means to be CPU limited, it's where your GPU is capable of outputting a certain number of frames, let's say 100, but your processor is bogged down with running all the other parts of the game that it can only process say 40 of those 100 frames. Therefore your frame rate would be 40 FPS. Therefore your CPU is a limiting factor, hence we call it CPU limited. So this could be why they capped it at 30 FPS on the console to have a smooth, consistent 30 frames a second rather than having it bounce around all over the place in the 40s and the 50s, unable to make it to a steady, consistent 60. How much this carries over to PC, uh, it, it will remain to be seen. Obviously on the PC side we have access to much higher performance processors uh, which could mitigate the issue. Again, how much remains to be seen. Let me know in the comments, um, are you planning to play Starfield on PC? And if so, what hardware are you going to be running it on? I'd love to hear from you. As for me, I'm going to be, well, <laughs> assuming I don't upgrade, which is never uh, ruled out. Uh, but for now, I will be looking at playing it on an AMD 5600X with my NVIDIA 3070. Not the highest end machine out there, but a sensible machine at a sensible price. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you've liked the video, please leave us a like. It really helps the video and the channel so much. And while you're there, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you in the next one.